What's up, everybody? Big Herc, fresh out. You tune into another edition of Prison Talk. Make sure you guys subscribe to the channel, support. You know, we kind of try to keep you guys laced up as much as possible, bringing you these dope interviews. I have here my man Sean, uh, extraordinaire from New Jersey, doing big things. You know, make sure you guys go check out his channel. Link in the description. And um, you know, we've been kicking it and, and chopping it up on different topics. And uh, he got some stories from the golf course, man. You know, I never learned how to golf. I've always been fascinated with the sport. You know, I know a lot of big things happen on the golf course. You know, a lot of gambling, a lot of money. You know, the guys on TV, Tiger Woods, Jack Nicholson, all of them, they're, they're all very, uh, very impactful people in sports and society. So I'm going to let him kick a little bit about some of his uh, tales on the golf course, man, because I think it's pretty interesting. Sean, man. Uh, and tell us some of the things that you've seen or some of the mo more interesting experiences you've had out there on the golf course caddying for some of these ballers, man. When I get, when I, um, when I finished my bachelor's degree, finished my bachelor's degree, historically black college in Atlanta, Georgia, Morris Brown College, shout out to Morris Brown, hard reset. Um, when I finished my bachelor's degree, I wanted to go to grad school, get my master's, right? So I'm applying to all of these grad schools. Stern School of Business, NYU, University of Michigan, Rutgers. Nobody fucking with me for whatever reason. So I'm caddying at the golf course. And this particular golf course didn't have no black members, no Jewish members. So I'm going out there one day, I'm caddying. And the dude I'm caddying for is a Jewish dude. So he ain't welcome to the club. I ain't welcome to the club, right? <laughs> so we caddying and shit, and we talking. I'm caddying, we talking. And I'm telling him, like, yo, man, I'm trying to get into grad school and shit like that. And uh, he said, uh, he said, Sean, call me Monday morning. He said, I, I, I work, I'm a professor down at NGIT, the New Jersey Institute of Technology. Named Richard Schatzberg. Shout out to Richard Schatzberg, wherever you at. Thanks, thank you, man. You helped me, man. I called him Monday. He said, Sean, come down here. I went down there. I met him. He said, follow me. He walked me over to the admissions office. And from behind the counter, he called somebody. He says, uh, register Sean for two classes for this fall in the School of Management graduate program as a non-matric. They said, okay, and they registered me right on the spot. No application, no nothing. No GMAT, no nothing. And he walked me outside. He said, listen, you registered, you're in. But if you get anything less than a B, you're out the program. And the rest is history, man. I finished my master's degree in two and a half years with a 3.28 GPA, man. Damn. And, 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 and these were... The, the 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 people man that helped me wow. man yeah man damn man yeah, that's man. fucking man that's powerful shit yeah, man. man yeah man um i'm in atlanta caddying and i'm caddying for one of the members at the club and he brings up david duvall who was number one golfer in the world i was going to school at morris brown david duvall was going to georgia tech he was a, i was a senior he was a junior david duvall ended up beating he was when tiger woods was playing he was the number one golfer in the world the nigga was money yeah and I got the caddy for him. I'd never seen no golf like that ever in my life, man. Another time, caddy for Dr. J. Oh, shit. At the Golf Club of Georgia in Atlanta. Um, I'm caddying and shit. And this, this course, this country club has some black members, but the group was in front of us and shit. It was a tall motherfucker. I'm like, man, who is that? Who the uh -huh. fuck is that? That's not... Because I knew all the black members over there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. So, I'm... We in front, like, yo, who the fuck is that? So when we got to this one hole, it was a hold up. And while we was pulling up to the tee to tee off, they had just teed off and was pulling out. And it was Dr. J. And I said, oh, shit, Dr. J. And he said, what up, home? <laughs> and kept on driving. Yo, I left my group and went to Caddy for him. I left them, motherfucker. Don't you mean? I ain't even uh, want the money. Yeah, yeah. And I went and finished. I caddy for Dr. J for the rest of the round, man. Got his autograph and the whole oh, shit. Oh, shit. Yeah, and I met a lot of motherfuckers on that golf course, man. Man, uh, that's crazy. 
you know, people, people, they, 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 uh, they don't realize like why people want to go to certain places and be a part of certain circles, even though it's, it's somewhat, you're somewhat ostracized, but just having access. And like you said, you're at a golf course where they're not, blacks aren't welcome, Jews ain't welcome, but he's golfing there. You're working there, mm. and by default, because people who wouldn't normally be around you are there with you and hear you talk, opportunity presents itself. And that's what people don't understand. Like, you might be around, I've been around people, and they, you might think, oh, this dude's a cold piece of shit, but then they get around him, and you start talking, he starts talking to you. You're like, man, hold on, you different, man. I've I never been around people. He, he don't really know what he's saying, but he's like, I never, you're different than what I would expect, and blah, blah, blah. Next thing you know, you, you talk to him what you want to do, and he can open a door. That's that's some powerful shit, man. It changes. Facts. It changes the game. Changes your life, kid. I mean, dude, you know, going forward, having an opportunity to do that, like, and and being able to now go to these places. How much you think that is a game changer? Even making moves in today's society, because I know out here, like, you know, OJ was golfing at the Brentwood Country Club, and I read an article where it was something about him. And when he brought in Sidney Portier, everybody was like, you know, he, he, there were only two black guys in there. Everybody was tripping. Oh man, I want to meet him. And how fascinated, but how it opened up doors for just things to happen because so and so's golfing there, so and so's golfing there, and now they can interact with you on a more intimate level, and it, it opens doors. Listen, man. Um, any kid, junior in high school, senior in high school, or fresh out of high school, you don't know what you want to do, man. You know, go to get you a job at a golf course where they got caddies, man. And um, you get paid cash every day. Most times, I don't know what they're doing now, but we got paid cash every day. But the the um, the, the people that you're gonna meet. Because I would caddy two rounds a day. I would go 18 in the morning, 18 in the afternoon. That's 36 holes. And, you know, you're with a person for four hours, and he is the mayor of this town. Or That's he's crazy, the, man. He's, uh, um, you, you know, he's a banker, an investment banker, or he owns this company. You get to talk to this man, and your, your application is your round with him, man. So when you're done playing, he knows you already. So it, it, you already you already locked in. And I want to say this here too, man. You know, there was a lot of mobsters that were members of these clubs too, man. And I see a lot of uh, the youth, they on this gang shit, you understand, and all this old mob shit. And, and I'd never take them serious because I saw mobsters who were members of this club. And you know what the fuck they was doing? They were bringing guests to the country club to play golf with them who was the police chief, the prosecutor, and judges. And they always played together, right? So they would play golf with the building, the zoning department head. Yeah, yeah. They're playing golf with people of influence that can make decisions. You understand? So these was what real... Gangsters do. And I saw this shit with my own eyes. This is a true story. Mm. Um, so, you know, if you're looking for a job, man, try to get you a little job at the golf course, man. You're going to meet all different types of people. Um, and it could really, uh, you know, my experience. And I wrote, when Tiger Woods got hot, and send this shit to Tiger Woods. Y'all send this to Tiger Woods. I wrote him when he was at Stanford. His athletic director was Wally Goodwin. I sent pictures of me caddying, and I wrote him a letter. I said, yo, I want a caddy for Tiger Woods. I sent the letter to Stanford. They sent the letter back. They kept the letter but sent the pictures back. So I don't know if Tiger ever got the letter or not, but I had got that good as a caddy that I was, because I had caddied on the tour. When the scenes would come to town, you know, the some senior players wouldn't have a caddy and they would take some of the local caddies and let you caddy for them, but you had to be good. And mm -hmm. I always got chosen. But I, I, tried, I tried the caddy for Tiger, man. Word was mm. born, man. And if he would have called, if I would have caddied for him, we'd been had them 18 majors mm. by now. We had like 22. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you guys. That's some boss game right there, you know. And just putting it in perspective, man, 
for the people who are out there just living life, man, think about what type of hustle you got to have to where you can have four hours a day free time to walk around on a green. Man, this is some boss came right here. You guys better subscribe and subscribe to his channel, man, because we, we bring in nothing but the heat. Big Herc, fresh out with this prison talk, man.